So we see if you look at the data in my ebooks uh, and my protocols, I teach a diet that helps reverse type 2 diabetes and improves insulin sensitivity massively in all type 1 patients. And I've learned this since 1999 uh, when I had a friend who was into cycling who would talk, tell me about his life as a type 1 diabetic. And it's really started, it kick-started me off on a path of understanding blood sugars because myself, I had some uh, warnings from doctors that I was soon to become diabetic in 2000. So I started a bit of a self-journey there, just reading through medical texts, et cetera, et cetera. Came to my conclusion where I am today. Anyway, so we have a high-fat diet, high-saturated fat diet, so high in whole food, animal products, decre and plant foods as well. They still... Plant fats still decrease insulin sensitivity, and that's a bad thing if you're diabetic, or a bad thing if you want to stay, di stay diabetes-free. So without changing intra-abdominal fat in weight-stable, overweight, and obese patients. This is 2017 from the National Library of Medicine. If we scroll down here, the conclusion is a diet very high in fats and saturated fats adversely affects insulin sensitivity and thereby might contribute to the development of type 2 diabetes. And if we just fast forward over here to uh, back to 1934, we're going to Michael J. Fox, back to the future, into the DeLorean. And we see Dr. Hemsworth, who is the father of basically insulin resistance and insulin sensitivity. Hemsworth, Dr. Hemsworth, discovered the difference between type 1 and type 2 diabetes. He coined the phrase insulin-dependent diabetes. He coined the phrase insulin resistance. Uh, he coined the phrase insulin sensitivity. Dr. Hemsworth's conclusion was, after putting patients in a clinical setting, in a hospital, where they had to have 100% dietary compliance, they couldn't sneak any food, all right? They couldn't go out and do a little bit of a cheat meal. He discovered that the higher the sugar intake, the lower the insulin resistance and the increase of insulin sensitivity. Hemsworth, Dr. Hemsworth discovered that if you feed a diabetic, a type 2 diabetes patient a diet of white refined sugar, white refined sugar, Right, that's going to trick a lot of people. They're going to have the, that's a meme worthy one. White refined sugar, potatoes, candies. Now, we're not talking chocolate, we're talking the, the hard candies, the, the teeth crackers. Don't use those, they can crack your teeth. All right. uh, potatoes, white rice, fruits, and fruit juice, jam, and refined white rice cakes. No butter, no oil, no animal. Okay, no avocado. He found these patients had the best response at insulin sensitivity. And he found the patients who are type 2 diabetes no longer needed any medication or their type 2 diabetes totally just pss, off into the stratosphere. And interestingly, it came back, the type 2 diabetes came back when the traditional high fat diabetes diet was reintroduced. So that's pretty amazing, all right? So the physicians were slow to appreciate that insulin allowed the proportion of carbohydrate in the diet to be increased. For as Hemsworth said, a well-founded theory directs that the carbohydrate in the diabetic's diet must be curtailed if health is to be preserved. On the other hand, he continued, a brilliant piece of clinical empiricism produces irrefutable proofs, <laughs> proofs irrefutable proof that a liberal allowance of carbohydrate acts favorably on the diabetic's health, all right? So you know, the empiricism began in 1926 when a high-carb diet was first shown to improve glucose tolerance in healthy individuals. That's why we say today, what we see today and what we say today that all these keto people out there, the, the keto people on YouTube, et cetera, the influencers, whoever they are, Ask them to do an oral glucose tolerance test. They all will fail that. They've all got diabetes, okay? We've got over here, Hemsworth, high carbohydrate diets and insulin efficiency. The British Medical Journal, 1934. All right, so we've got the recent studies that prove it, and we've got the studies in 1934 that prove it, okay? So people say, show me the latest stuff. We show you some stuff from 2017, all right? We're showing you 
anecdotal evidence of people in my coaching group or doing my protocols reversing type 2 diabetes and having their best hemoglobin A1C, their lowest glycated hemoglobin numbers as type 1 diabetics. This stuff just works. It's all in my ebooks, okay? Anyway, let's read what Dr. Himsworth and Dr. Rabinowicz discovered at the director of the medical unit at the University College Hospital in London. A London hospital conducted fascinating studies on the topic of insulin sensitivity, establishing himself as a true pioneer in the field of diabetes research. In this particular study, the participants were healthy males between the ages of 18 and 22. So healthy young men. Dr. Hemsworth chose to chose the <laughs> Dr. Hemsworth. I'm excited about this stuff, man. This is just like the science, the data is irrefutable. People are like, do not, I don't believe you because you're not a fat doctor trying to steal me products I don't need. I don't trust people that do that. All right, this is the doctors talking here. This is the medical journals, man. Oh, well, no, 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 no. Now you, <laughs> the people who want to stay fat, sick, and nearly dead, they're going to stay fat, sick, and nearly dead, all right? They've already clicked off this video. Anyway, let's continue. So Dr. Hemsworth chose to use healthy subjects, people living without diabetes, because he wanted to explore the mechanism that caused the body to be able to utilize carbohydrate in the presence of insulin. He chose to study subjects whose pancreases were capable of manufacturing and secreting insulin. Participants were fed either a high carb, again, refined carbohydrate diet, white rice, white sugar, fruit juice, jam, fat free candies, etc., low fat diet, or a low carb, high fat sort of keto diet, bacon, eggs, fat, saturated fats, high in. They consumed one diet for at least a full week, had their insulin sensitivity tested. Remember, remember these are healthy young men with no diabetes, etc. And then they placed on the opposite diet for at least a full week and were sub subsequently retested. So they switched the diets. They, t well, they did the diets, tested, then switched the diets and tested. The study was carried out in a hospital setting so that it was ensured that participants, again, would follow the diet with 100% compliance. What happened, according to the results? It's evident that a high-fat diet, insulin takes longer to act and then acts more slowly on the blood sugar than when the subject is given a high carb diet. And remember, these are young, healthy, active men. Right? Imagine if they're a sedentary 50 year old with a lot of adipose tissue, low testosterone, high estrogen, or maybe low estrogen, right? Sedentary, maybe they've got a, a back problem or whatever. Right? So, so look, look at how bad the blood sugars were on these healthy young men just a week in to a high fat diet, okay? Young men, 18 to 22, athletic, healthy young men with no glucose impaired issues or whatever, right? And already they're starting to get diabetes type two in just one week. No wonder it's a good idea to invest in diabetes stock right now because all this high fat stuff getting out there, all this sugar tax, people eating less sugar than ever, diabetes is going up higher than ever before. Literally right now in the world, sugar intakes the lowest it's ever been per capita and diabetes is the highest it's ever been because the fat intake just keeps going up and up and up. When you cut sugar, you increase fat every single time, no matter what diet you follow. Anyway, so in a dietary high fat environment, glucose tolerance is com compromised. When challenged with an old glucose tolerance test, those eating high fat diet experience blood glucose as high as 200 milligram a deciliter, whereas those eating a high carb diet never experience blood glucose in excess of 120 milligrams per deciliter. In this study established the higher the sugar content of the diet, the more effective insulin became, okay? And we show this image here, a direct comparison of glucose tolerance on a high fat and ho versus high carb diet containing the same number of calories uh, in one subject here, okay? So this is the proof, in, but here's the thing, forget all of this, do the test yourself. Do the old glucose tolerance test after eating a high fat diet for a week, all right? Do the glucose tolerance test after eating 10 grams of fat a day, unlimited sugars for a week, and watch the difference. Now, people are like, well, I don't really care about this. I just want to lose weight. Well, the higher your insulin resistance, 
the higher your fasting insulin, or and if you're a type one diabetic, you'll need more units of insulin. So your weight will go up, which is great if you want to step on the scales and see the number higher than last time. If you want to get on the scales in the morning and see the scale, the numbers lower than last time, you need to lower your insulin resistance, which will lower your fasting insulin levels. The only way to do this and keep mental sanity as well and increase your life performance and feel good and get sufficient serotonin and dopamine and melanin, melatonin so you can sleep deep and soundly and also produce sufficient testosterone. We know that keto diets lower testosterone because they increase cortisol, okay? Sugar also lowers cortisol. Then the only way to do that is with as much sugar, potatoes, white rice, fruit as you care for and keep fat under 10 grams a day. Do the experiment, okay? And on the first hour, you're gonna feel better. You know, well, I just feel more relaxed. I feel like, or feel like doing something. Yeah, I just feel motivated now. Or you feel like relaxed or motivated, one of the two. And you're like, damn, I've been lied to a lot of my life. What's going on here? So there you go, that's the deal. If you have any questions or comments down below, let me know. I'll leave some links in the comment section and you can have a little sniff through those. Again, this is all detailed in my eBooks on Duranod.com. I'm the only person out there, I'm the only author out there, established author, the only established author out there I know who teaches this level of congruent, accurate information. Everybody else, as far as I'm aware, contradicts what they say. They might use these studies, but then say carbs are bad or sugar's bad or don't eat dates, even though they use these exact foods in the studies these people quote to get some scientific clout. Hypocrites. <laughs> anyway, that's the deal. Boom. That's why I'm so lean and I don't have diabetes after 20 plus years high sugar intake. I understand the endocrine system very, very well. And this is why my insulin levels are lower than the average uh, endocrinologist who specializes in diabetes medication. Because these people specialize in medication. I specialize in reversals or lowering certain medications that have side effects, etc. Obviously a type one will always need insulin. They're insulin dependent and that's how it goes for life. But all the type ones I've worked with all right, since 1999, they all find what I teach works best.